Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's actually been a while. I ended up taking a hiatus that I didn't mean to take. If you're new here, my name is Brittany Mason. Well, Brittany S. Mason. I am a beauty and commercial model based here in Los Angeles. Some of the major brands that I've worked with so far have been Sephora, Fenty Beauty, Dose of Colors, Scott Barnes Cosmetics. I've worked with SLMD Skincare by Dr. Pimple Popper. Recently, I worked with Give Beauty by Gwen Stefani. I've also worked with quite a few celebrity makeup artists as well. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how I became a professional model and yeah, just share my story. And just, you know, keep in mind, not everybody's experiences are gonna be the same because we all have a different path. But uh, one of the most commonly asked questions that I get is how I got here. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you guys my story. <laughs> so I actually grew up in so a little backstory, I grew up in Lancaster, California, in Southern California, and originally I was in school for biology to become a registered nurse because uh, my parents have always been in healthcare and unfortunately that's not, that's not the field that I want to be in. Um, uh, originally I, let's see, I think, okay, I went away for school for a little bit. I didn't last long because that's not what I was trying to do. I had gone to Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I only lasted a semester. <laughs> I did have a lot of fun and I feel like that was a great experience for me because to be honest, that's where my journey started. I participated in a natural hair pageant that they had on campus. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, to an HBCU, predominantly black college in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, most of the people that attend the school have curly hair. And so the natural hat pageant was, you know, like a beauty pageant, but everybody wore their natural hair texture. So most of us have curly to kinky, tightly coiled hair. So it was a great way for us to like embrace our natural hair. And <laughs> that was the first time I've done like a so-called professional photo shoot aside from like senior photos. Back in, I think summer of 2014, I graduated from high school and I think the previous year for senior photos I took those and that was the first set of like professional photos that I'd actually taken before and so that was the first time I'd ever done any sort of photo shoot. <laughs> What's funny is I feel like that brought me some empowerment because like you know getting your makeup done is super exciting getting your hair done. Uh, yeah those pictures they weren't bad but like they really could have like brought the makeup back or retouched it but they didn't. <laughs> So I'll attach some of those in here as well. Um, so that was the first time I'd ever done like a professional photo shoot. And I remember they had like a cute little setup. It was the first shoot I did. And then I got to campus and I was getting ready to participate in this natural hair pageant. At this school, <laughs> um, they had set up like a, a backdrop in like a bigger, I think it was like a dorm area. I remember being extremely nervous. They had draped us in like some royal purple fabric. <laughs> Pretty much we were supposed to be like Greek goddesses and that was the theme. Um, I had done my own makeup at the time. <laughs> it wasn't good, but I thought it was great at the time. And I remember like, it was like five of us just getting ready to take photos for this pageant as like a promotional flyer thing for it. And I remember I was extremely nervous because I had never, you know, really done photo shoots and like the idea of like getting in front of a camera was like terrifying to me. So I obviously didn't, I made sure I was last. <laughs> so, I remember watching the other girls to try to like, you know, get an idea of how this was going to be because this was my first time. Um, I wasn't comfortable being photographed really. Like in all actuality, I was extremely nervous to even take part in this. I got up there and I was like, let me pretend like this is a real photo shoot. But I remember being extremely nervous. So I got in front of the camera and I tried to give her like my best face. I don't remember what I did at this point, but because it was a while back and if I could find those photos, that'd be awesome. But I don't think I'm going to find them. That was like eight years ago. Um, but long story short, with every pose that I gave, the woman that was taking the photos, she was like, yes, yes. Like she was, she was cheering me on. And so she was really excited and she, she was just like, yes, girl. But to me, that was like huge. <laughs> and I remember her running across the room to go show the other people in the room what my photos looked like. And I remember being super embarrassed because like, at that time, I wasn't really comfortable with getting attention, so it was kind of drawing attention to me, and I was like, oh, this is kind of awkward. But she showed me the photos, and they actually had come out good at the time. And Sage, if you ever see this, thank you so much. This was That was actually one of my, I think my second shoot photo shoot ever before I even, 
you know, got into like modeling professionally. So I, I appreciate your support. Long story short, then after that, after I left there, one of my friends at the time, name's Dino. Have you seen this? <laughs> you see this, Dino? Thank you. I appreciate your support as well. He was standing in the lobby with a camera and he was like, hey, your makeup looks great. You should let me take some pictures of you. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. Because the idea of doing photo shoots, once again, I didn't understand why anybody would want to take any pictures of me. I wasn't comfortable with it. So I definitely said no, uh, but he convinced me. I remember at the time, I oh, I had red lipstick on. I had a blue Aeropostale t-shirt on <laughs> and maybe some leggings and some sandals. My, my friend at the time, Dino, had taken a photo of me in the lobby. And like I said, these pictures, cause you know, when you're thinking like inside of a building, most of the lights like fluorescent and it's terrible. It's like yellow lighting. So the pictures were not that good. But at the time I thought those were really good photos. Like, you know, I was embarrassed, but I pretended like, you know, it was a photo shoot and he took some pictures of me. So then he was like, hey, how about we set up a real shoot? I got outfits together that were like dressy looks. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be cute. And and I remember I bought like a wig from like a beauty supply store. I, I know it wasn't necessary, but I, I just wanted to do something different. I forgot how I got my hair to lay down. I think I paid somebody to braid my hair down. We took photos around campus with my, <laughs> I'm gonna attach these photos. But this was back in 2015. So I didn't know what I was doing. I hadn't done like really any photo shoots before. My posing was awful because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I didn't have a makeup artist because I was still new. And so we found different spots around campus to take photos. <laughs> I'm gonna insert them. But at the time, like I, I was feeling really confident about those. I was posting them all over my Instagram and we had taken pictures by the bluff towards the front of the campus. There was like a couple of houses on campus. I don't know what they were for. I took all these photos and I was so confident about them. And I remember posting them on my Instagram and so at the time they had this app called ask fm where people can like message you anonymous stuff and of course my messages were all terrible but they had this thing where everybody could get dressed up on wednesdays they called it pretty wednesday so you dress up you know to the best of your ability and i would put on like heels and stuff and i thought it was cute and so at the same time i was getting messages on the anonymous platform about how I couldn't dress. I thought I could dress cute on Pretty Wednesdays. I had a fake photographer taking my photos. I thought I was a model and all this stuff. And at the same time also with my Instagram, I was switching back and forth between, I, my, my username was My Black is Beautiful at first. I think that was the original. And then I think I had like Brittany Simone 96. Um, Cause my middle name Simone. Uh, Brittany S Mason 96. I kind of went through all these different names to try to figure out like what I wanted to be called. Um, and then between me switching up these names, I also was putting model in my bio, then taking it out, then putting aspiring model, then taking it out. And so I was Brittany S. Mason. Oh, now I'm Brittany S. Mason on my platforms, but I was Brittany Simone the model, Brittany Simone the model, B. Simone the model, B. Simone official. I went through a whole bunch of names that, I don't know. But finally I decided, you know what, if I'm gonna become a serious model and I wanna be taken seriously, I need to just put it on my page as if I am and then figure it out. So I think the last name I settled on was Brittany uh, S. Mason Official. And so I kept that name up until like 2019 until I got hacked. Somebody stole that account. So unfortunately, all that hard work went out the door, but it's fine. I realize in general, if you want to be taken seriously for something, you need to just say that you are and then figure out how to do it to the best of your ability and go from there. And I know for me, um, when I was on campus, like I said, I would do the shoots with my friend. Um, I had a friend, at the time, I, had, I think I had an Android. <laughs> I had a friend with an iPhone. Shout out to Brianna. <laughs> Brianna was awesome. <laughs> Her name is Brianna Green. Anyway, she was like another supporter of mine, which I really appreciate, really great friend. She'd take pictures of me around campus and she would send me all 200, 300 photos. And I think that also helps because she was interested in modeling as well. So I thought I was cool. It was great to have that support. And I had a couple other friends that would take pictures of me every once in a while as well. Oh, also shout out to Michelle. <laughs> that was another friend of mine from that time. She would take amazing like, cute pictures of me as well. I think that was another friend that had an iPhone. And obviously if you're anybody that's ever tried to send pictures from an iPhone to Android, you know that the pictures can lose quality. <laughs> And you can't airdrop, so I don't think they had that at that time. I don't remember, but um, WhatsApp, I think, was how we were sending pictures. And they would send me hundreds of photos that they were taking of me, and they never complained, and I appreciated that because 
they were very supportive of me now that i think about it i think at the actual pageant someone did my makeup but i did my makeup for the promotional shoot but yeah just having support really helped out i remember also at the time i have a late friend named jeremy that was there also and he really believed in me and he always told me that he thought that i could be a model and i was like no like because i didn't think that was possible like i remember growing up like people would tell my mom or tell my dad like oh your daughter's so pretty she's a model and they would like cover my ears and walk me away from them or be like she needs to focus on school or just like don't tell her that and like walk me away from them and so i didn't think that was possible i figured this was something that was like out of my reach that it wasn't you know really possible so i kind of just like disregarded it for a while my friend really believed in me and he's like hey i found this i think it was a fashion show in lafayette louisiana and at the time i once again was still super shy and he was like no you could do this i believe in you and i was like no but this is super scary because <laughs> i was i was terrified at the time and um he convinced me to to get ready to go to this casting call and it's crazy because like i said i had no experience i'd never done any runway um the only like runway portion type thing i've done was the, the the beauty pageant but even that i you know i felt confident about that but i received you know negative messages about that as well um i remember a couple people telling my roommates like oh Brittany thought she was all that. She was terrible. There was a talent portion and I remember I read a, like a Maya Angelou poem because I didn't know what else to do. I didn't have any talents to do. I messed up a couple times while reading because I was nervous and I remember hearing negative things about my performance and I remember that like broke me for a little bit. So we had the, 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 um, the casting call and so I remember my friend, he, he helped me do research because at the time I was super nervous about it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to prepare for it. Um, I didn't know what he, to wear to casting calls and so he pulled up a whole bunch of different articles and all of them pretty much said tank top, jeans, and heels. So I'm like, okay, cool. Um, now that I'm older now, I know that you're supposed to wear like all black for the most part, but I had no idea. So we got to the place and unfortunately they canceled it because of rain. We got to the location, they canceled it because of rain, and but I felt confident that I actually took the time to actually try to go to that casting, even though I was terrified about it. And I remember I was, I was feeling intimidated by the girls that had the casting. They were all stunning women. I just felt intimidated because I'm like, they're gorgeous. Like, you know, if they have these girls, why would they pick me to be casted for this? And so I remember I was comparing myself to them and I didn't think that it was possible for me to actually be selected for something. So fast forward, I'll share towards the end of the video, but I have walked for different shows now. But I had zero experience, so I didn't think it was possible for me. And my friend took some photos of me on his cell phone and we had like a mini photo shoot and that, that helped boost my confidence. So I think just having friends that supported me really, really, really raised my self-esteem with that and being in an area that actually appreciated black women's beauty. And I have to say that because I'm, you know, from the schools that I've gone to growing up, they weren't really like supportive or kind of about like darker complected women. We weren't viewed as beautiful. so me getting to go out of state and actually getting to experience a different state, um, being an area where people actually appreciate dark skin was actually really nice because I feel like my beauty was actually appreciated. And the thing that made me different is now the accepted versus like me being the only person that looks like me in class and people are like, ew, it's pretty.